I'm Jason Carter. Physical optimization defines my life. The day I was born, doctors nearly killed me with medical malpractice. They said I'd never walk. I've been proving them wrong for 35 years. It's easier than you think to obtain super optimal health. I've devoted my life to it, and with my help, you can too. I'm Jason Carter, and this is Enzymental. And welcome to Enzyme Mental. I'm Jason Carter, and today I wanted to tell you about magnesium's role in brain function. So over the last 60 years or so, symptoms of anxiety, depression, and attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, or ADHD, have steadily increased, particularly among children and young adults. And American adults appear to be experiencing the burden of stress, anxiety, and depression more than ever before. It's interesting to note that many of the symptoms of these psychological issues are identical to those of a magnesium deficiency, and those would be things like irritability, anxiousness, nervousness, inability to focus or concentrate, sleep disturbances, and also memory problems. There are likely numerous factors at play here, but dietary magnesium intake has steadily decreased over the last century from around 500 milligrams a day in 1900 to an average of maybe 250 milligrams a day today, which puts many of us at a risk for deficiency. So magnesium may not be the first nutrient that comes to mind when you think of your brain, but it turns out that magnesium is incredibly important for cognitive function. It's required for proper neurotransmitters transmitter production and function, it modulates the stress response, and it also strongly influences brain plasticity, or our brain's ability to change and form new communication pathways. Magnesium has been shown to enhance learning and memory, and it's been effective in treating depression and anxiety, and is actually being studied for its potential to rewire the brain to respond without fear and anxiety in cases of severe anxiety disorders like post-traumatic stress disorder, or PTSD. Magnesium is involved in the production and function of mood-regulating neurotransmitters like serotonin, and it's also known to reduce inflammation. And low serotonin and high inflammation are both believed to contribute to depression. So for this reason, magnesium is very beneficial for depression and anxiety. Like other mental disorders, diagnoses of attention deficit hyperactivity disorder are also steadily increasing. Characterized by an inability to pay attention and stay focused, difficulty controlling behavior, hyperactivity, mood swings, and impulsivity, all of these are common symptoms of magnesium deficiency. ADHD can interfere with school, social, and home life. Children with ADHD are likely to be magnesium deficient and that supplementation radically improves symptoms. So what about brain plasticity? Brain plasticity, again, is the brain's ability to form new communication pathways or synapses between neurons. Synapses are how the neurons communicate, allowing us to learn new things and form and retain new memories. But as we age, the synapses become less plastic or flexible. Thinking slows down, learning a new concept becomes far more difficult, and memories may actually be lost. So in other words, there is a loss in cognitive function. It's long been thought that there wasn't much to be done about this loss of plasticity, that it was simply an inevitable and unavoidable part of aging. Magnesium has actually been found to be a critical factor in controlling synapse density and plasticity. And there's even a remarkable form of magnesium called magnesium L3-inate, which actually crosses the blood-brain barrier and gets entirely to the brain. When you take a regular magnesium, a little bit of that magnesium reaches the brain, but really not that much. So magnesium L3 and 8 is actually pretty substantial because it goes entirely to the brain. And often, when you begin taking magnesium L3 and 8, people who do this often experience significant improvement in cognitive function, including improved executive function, which would be things like time management, planning, attention, and focus and improved long-term and short-term memory also. The discovery that magnesium increases synaptic plasticity and density has led researchers to explore magnesium's potential for rewiring brains affected by traumatic fear and anxiety, such as in cases of phobias, PTSD, and other extreme anxiety disorders. It's believed that elevated levels of brain magnesium can create new synapses and communication pathways that are not influenced by fear and anxiety, thus altering behavior for the better. 
Long known as a calming mineral, magnesium plays a key role in activating receptors in the brain known as NMDA receptors. These receptors are activated by glutamate, an excitatory neurotransmitter which opens channels allowing calcium to enter the neuron, making it more sensitive to stimulation. Magnesium has the ability to block the NMDA receptor. This is important because if glutamate and calcium are continually activating these receptors, they can actually damage the neuron and eventually lead to cell death. In both human and animal models, dysregulation of the NMDA receptors are associated with depression. Magnesium also plays a role in regulating the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, or HPA, which is our stress response system, and magnesium deficiencies have been shown to induce anxiety and HPA axis dysregulation. Anxiety is, as I've said, one of the physical symptoms of a magnesium deficiency. Magnesium can actually suppress the release of the stress hormones cortisol and adrenaline, and work at the blood-brain barrier to possibly prevent stress hormones from entering the brain. So with a large portion of our population being critically deficient in this most critical of minerals, you really should consider magnesium among the supplements and nutrients you take every day for your brain. It's safe and well tolerated for children and adults alike. The primary form of magnesium for brain function is magnesium L3 and 8, which crosses your blood-brain barrier and effectively increases brain levels of magnesium. And a very common dose for magnesium L3 and 8 that I've seen is often around 2,000 milligrams. And you'll typically find that in about three capsules or two to three tablets. You should also take regular magnesium for the muscle and nerve relaxation that it provides. And if you're going to do this, try to take at least 400 milligrams of regular magnesium in addition to what you're taking for your brain. Thanks for watching. I'm Jason Carter, and I'll see you next time on Enzyme Mental. Stay healthy. Thank you.